View from the Gutters, Episode 4. Welcome to View from the Gutters, the comic book podcast where each episode we discuss a collected edition, trade paperback, or graphic novel, and then recommend and vote on the book for the next episode. Warning. The discussion portion of this show has massive spoilers for that book. On this episode, we discuss Silver Surfer Requiem. To skip ahead to the recommendation section, skip ahead to 2556. We had a slight audio problem with Joe's mic on this recording. Uh, we did our best to fix it, but we apologize if there's any drop in audio quality. Uh, welcome to episode four of Oprah Winfrey's Fortnite Fortnightly comic, comic book, book of Club. the month, Fortnite Club. Yes. Something. Brought to you by own. I don't know what the fuck we are doing. <laughs> yeah. I, think real name, I think the real name is... Oprah Winfrey's comic book of the Fortnite Club. Fortnightly Comic Book Fortnightly, 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 Fortnightly Comic Book Club. Fortnightly, Oprah Winfrey's Fortnightly Comic Book Club? There we go. Something it, like that. Done. Golden. Sold. I feel like it should be it's more alliterative. Stone. I feel like alliterate? it should be... Alliterate? Like an alliteration. <laughs> we alliteration. should use awesome alliteration, alliteration for... I think this. we just need a real name. I know you're that the, this you're was... The one, I know this was my... I know this was my idea. I know this was my idea. This all of your idea. You know But this was the only idea. This was the only idea. Don't blame me for that. This... It's not my fault. Kind of. It was, yeah. I, Fortnite. I, yeah. All right. It's not I even Fortnite. It's okay. been like a month and a half. Yeah. Yeah, we're awful. <laughs> <laughs> but see, you won't know that because nothing's been posted. Well, yet, we did okay. say a couple dates in, oh, in really? some of the episodes. Yeah. We should <laughs> not have, disregard we never those should dates. Have done yeah. that. that it was a mistake. It's timeless. This is yeah. timeless. Is this what we're going for Tuesday. here. This is Monday. No. June sixth. No. 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 It's not. Mm-hmm. It was a fortnight after that last. Whatever time. we did, whenever <laughs> yeah. we were here last time. Yeah. All right. Fourteen days. Yeah. Um, fortnight. I'm Andrew Chard, joined by Matt McGinnis. Joined by Bernie Veray. Joe Pretty. Yeah, making his first appearance. Yeah. Inaugural right. first right. issue. <laughs> it's got right. a gold foil cover. No, no, it's and a, a black. Oh, sorry. Wrap around. Come on. Wrap around. Yeah. Come on. And With a collector card. Yeah. It does have a coupon in it for the zero issue. It's polybagged. It is. Definitely. So you can't read it. You don't want to read it. It's not. Yeah. It's With right, limited yeah. collector's Buy two edition copies, plaster. Keep one in a bag. Yeah. Tell your friends. Yeah. It's going to put you through college. It, it is. One day it will. Today. <laughs> Tomorrow. Today, it today's will. not that day. Tomorrow. Not that day. Still not that day. Probably never. But Maybe like years. Years from now. This will be worth more than other issues. This, yeah. It will. It will. <laughs> All right. What, how do we? It's been so long. Since we, <laughs> all right. So our last book. On, last time on Oprah Winfrey's <laughs> Fortnightly Comic, Comic Book Club, Club. Uh, we, so. we 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 picked uh, Silver Surfer Requiem. Yes, right? my yes, choice. Did. Bernard's choice. Yeah, we're not keeping score. I'm just saying. I, mean, I just wanted to introduce. You, yeah. Well, <laughs> they just listened to the lot. Hopefully, they're just listening to them all in a row. Yeah. They can't stop because it's yeah. so good. And somehow they jump each fortnight right after the podcast to listen to them. Well, no, we just don't well, upload them. Uh, yeah. Until like Whatever. all of yeah. them. Because we're yeah. Yeah. until we're done. Until then... we're done with everything, <laughs> the every single show comic is done, book, and then we upload it all, of all them. together. That's how you gain a following. That's yeah, in an, they omni- a in, an, of- in an omnibus <laughs> <Yeah>. style. <laughs> they have a Oprah Winifrey's <laughs> Omnibus <laughs> Comic Book Club of the Fortnite. <laughs> we exclusively do omnibus from now on. <laughs> omnibuy. Yeah. Omnibuy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Multiple omnibus. Omnibuses. Omnibies. I, you know, I never thought that the, about the plural of omnibus. Because, there isn't you know, one. No, there's it's, not. No, right? because it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's supposed it's to be omni- plural. Well, no. Omnibus. No, omnibus, no, omnibus, omnibus, omnibus means omnibus. omnibus means yeah, all, all books, all all books yeah, in so one. They're, they're all inclusive. Yeah, you can't. You can't have more than one. All inclusive. No, thanks, comics. <laughs> Thank you. We love you. Well, you know that's just the misuse of the of the English language. It's been going on forever. No, it's fucking comic book's fault it's, only uh, exclusively. You, you seem very it's bitter so for being on a comic book. <laughs> I am really bitter and <laughs> jaded. I don't jaded. think you're a true comic book fan unless you I are bitter. Period <laughs> on life. That's, that's, yeah, that that's could true. be too. Like I, I have ceased to find joy in comic books for a while. Like yeah. why do they do that? It happens. <laughs> Obviously, that's the complete wrong choice. God, oh, God. If, oh, if only I were writing Batman. <laughs> it would be so much cooler. DC yeah. reset anyone? Oh. DC. Oh. Should we talk about that? Uh, I don't want to get angry. <laughs> Maybe we should wait till the end so we can just yeah, rage okay. through the table. At the end, rage through the I credits. Think we should- I don't know. We'll touch on it. Like a prediction or something, so we can laugh after it happens. Yeah. Every. Maybe it should be a completely separate podcast. No, no. At the end of this one, we'll talk about the reboot. 
All right. Fair Done enough. in December by DC. September. Yeah. September. 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 August. August thirty first. JLA. Number one. Number one or yeah. zero. Number. No, it's 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 n it's one? number one. Oh. They're not going with zero issues. No. But zero no. comes before one. But that's old. Hat. No. That see what'll happen is more. like five issues in they'll do a zero issue. Do they do a one half issue? Do you guys remember those? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still, yeah, that's it is. Yeah. 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 Uncanny yeah. X Men five point five. I think I still have an the XL Man of War one half somewhere. Really? Yeah, wow. like dead serious. Wow, it's worth fuck all. But Zero. It. <laughs> it's worth Absolutely. one half of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is scary. The Which one is, uh, uh, still nothing. Carry some no, other actually, numbers. You know, it's, There's a pie in there. Is, yeah, half of zero is zero, right? Uh, half of zero is indeed zero. You are a mathematician. I am. I'm I not. Am. Mm, Unfortunately, yes. you know. I don't do math. No, I do. I do more. I do math for everybody here. One plus one. Yeah, no, you can't be anything. Yeah, it's it could, could be. be, it could be, could be imaginary numbers and this and that. No. I don't know. I, yeah, you guys both. You guys, you. you guys both took that this quarter, didn't you? Yeah, I'm taking that now. I took You're taking it now. I'm taking it now. Differential equations. I took it in calculus three. Fuck you guys. So I'm taking photography right now. So I'm doing it's all the hard work. What about that English yeah. class here? Oh, uh, don't get me started. You're gonna. It's gonna be. It's gonna be pretty difficult at, at Evergreen. Okay. The photography class. Photography. Yeah. That seems good. Whoa, amazing. whoa, Evergreen. Now we're now we're putting ourselves on the map here. People can find me. I'm all over the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hard to find. We have a <laughs> oh man. No, I'm just not that hard to find. If you look. My personal phone number, keeping address. <laughs> all I'm in it. Maybe I should be more careful. Social security <laughs> number. A <laughs> copy of my birth certificate. That's your username. You can have that it. Is, like, that's your profile picture. It is you, your birth certificate. You know, if you, um, yeah, if you're going to identity theft someone, it should probably be someone else that yeah, no, has money. That. that has money and then, a great credit score. Yeah, something. <laughs> I'm not going to help you very much, <laughs> Mr. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal this thief. Because then attracted the other kind of internet stalker yeah but I you know that might be cool. i i want that's what i'm looking for that's, that's, what should that's i put what on you have kind of a baby that. face I do like, uh, oh definitely I like baby has with a beard. beard yeah i do love walks on the beach i would do would i actually uh, don't i don't like walks on the beach Same. at least around here it's cold and and so rocky, like it's still rocky. I, you I also really, hate really, California. I hate. I don't yes. You grew up there, though. So. No, I, I, I lived there for ten years. Whatever. And I don't listen when you talk. That, I, I don't either, honestly. <laughs> I really don't. I, I take that. So, comic books. We don't. So, what? what's going on? <laughs> what happened? This was the bibliography episode, right? Yeah. yeah, so yeah, yeah let's talk cool. about ourselves. Um, this is the zero episode. Yeah. Of <laughs> yeah. Requiem, huh? yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, right. Written by J. Michael Straczynski, artist uh, Isad Ribic. Woo. The yeah. art was beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, painted, painted, painted it. style of what, yeah. Alex Ross. Art really was my favorite part. Of it. I, Art's it's, really good. Uh, although I have the same complaint I have with a lot of Alex Ross. Although um, he does it better, I think, than Alex Ross is. Alex, Alex Ross has like that. Every panel could be a movie poster kind of look, yeah, and there's yeah. like no, like fluid motion. Like, motion. Right. like everything looks like it's standing still. Yeah, but yeah. he Stands does. Alone. He does a lot better, like with the action, I think, than Alex Ross. I actually prefer this. Yeah, I oh, think Alex Ross. Yeah. No, I think. Um, but yeah, there wasn't that much action in this one. Yeah, but he's yeah. got some cool like shots of him. Yeah, there's on the definitely like, board. but epic like, shots. Yeah, like, but, like blowing up battle pose. station, battleships, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's but I really, cool. I feel like the art matches the story great yeah. because oh, there yeah. isn't a oh, lot yeah. of action in it, and it really is a a character driven like a story. Yeah, and Silver Surfer yeah. looks fucking really good. Yeah, yeah. Up yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's not just a gray guy. Yeah. Like, he's he's not a, like he looks uh, metallic. Cool. Yeah. and there's he's, some like there's hues to reflect. Yeah, his. Yeah. yeah, he's got nice. You know, Which is very cool. facial silver ex- chrome facial like, expressions yeah. too. Like he yeah. does a good job with emotionality. Yeah, I mean, in the book, that's a word. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Just, no, that's right. Fucking word. It's, I mean, it's in there. Fuck I mean, you, I would Webster's. like. You're right. You like, you're first. You're first. Emotionality. <laughs> that's, a, that's a thing. Galactus also looks pretty fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks B A. I'm I'm digging on that. So right. uh, let's just go around the table and kind of give your initial initial thoughts real quick. Um, when I first started reading it, I won't, I won't lie. The art was, it just, it took me out of the story for just probably about an issue. But after I, like, after I kind of got it, it clicked with me. I just loved it more and more every page that I read. And by the end, it was like, 
it was fantastic. And the story, um, again, I, I'm not a huge Silver Surfer person. Like, I've read a couple of comics that have him in it. But it was kind of weird for me that the fact this is a, basically a death issue, this is, or a death trade, a, yeah, yeah. a death story. Yeah. Um, that it was really actually a, a great introduction to the character. Like, yeah. I really, um, which is what surprised me. Like, yeah. um, and it really, I don't know, I mean, like, it made me connect with him a yeah. lot more. Um, and it's really, when you think about it, it the story's epic. Yeah. It is a very epic story. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, there's a part in, uh, where <clears throat> he meets up with Spider-Man and, uh, also Mary Jane, and he yeah. gives for like five minutes I think yeah, for, like a, for a brief a brief yeah, period of time cool. like he gives everyone the power cosmic yeah and that, that was just epic like that was awesome was that was like, epic like the only hero who could like stop and like have peace on the world for like five five minutes yeah. or something I mean just the I mean really just after you read it to sit back and think about the gravity of the story there there aren't that many stories that I've read where I really felt like they were able to kind of capture that where you actually sat back and went whoa like yeah. like that that is huge so i mean i loved it i cool. i really i really liked it it's actually probably in somewhere in my like top 10 wow yeah, yeah that's good cool beans yeah joe yeah. joe what do you think um well i i mean i i like the art i really did i i agree with you about alex ross i think he has a tendency uh, you know, I think his stuff in like Kingdom Come is really good yeah. because there's not doesn't lend itself to more of the action. But uh, my biggest problem with it, was, and I like the Silver Surfer too. I don't think he gets. I think recently he's been getting a little more attention, which I think is cool. But um, I, th- I just it felt very sentimental to me, overly sentimental. I felt like there was just way too much kind of like oh. He's the Silver Surfer. He's gonna bring peace to the world. But like, like I thought that could have been a really powerful scene. But there was something about it that just kind of was like, it wasn't quite. I wanted to be taken in, and I wasn't. I, I just was like, not really able to get there. I thought, um, and I think for me, it's summed up with uh, the. And I won't, I won't go out and say it. But there's a scene with Galactus at the end. Where no, you can say we spoil it. This. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Spoiler, yeah. We spoil it. Yeah, we spoil it. Well, Galactus there's... comes and he's like the sad old boss, and I'm yeah. just like, no, this is the devourer of worlds we're talking about. He's I... had five other heralds. Yeah. He's no. I mean, he's not going to stand like silently over the silver server. I thought that was cool, though. I, mean, I thought that yeah, was definitely I cool. I thought it was cool, but I just, I guess it's suspension of disbelief. Yeah, and that's, well, there's I, that. There's like the author was just like, "This is gonna be kick ass." Yeah, and I just, but like, I, I, I it wouldn't really get there for me. You know, I kind of felt um, in All Star Superman. There's this thing where people are saying, "Okay, before Superman, there's another spoiler alert. Before Superman dies, he's gonna create. He's gonna accomplish these twelve great deeds, right?" And I kind of felt along that line. It was like Straczynski had read that and was like. We could do something similar with the Silver Surfer. Even though we'll this was it. first. Like, was it? Yeah. Oh, well, sure. then, then, then yeah, that's this is, this is, this uh, is 2007. Yeah, yeah, 2007. It came out in 2007. So, so All-Star Superman All-Star. was like... 2009, I think. Was it? I think so. so. Uh, maybe single issues were 2008, but... Well, maybe. I mean, it just... Uh, it, either way, whichever came first. I, know, I thought like well, this was before this, because it's Marvel Knights, and I was like, when did Marvel yeah, Knights Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway... Yeah, they. I don't know. They both could have come out around the same time. But. Same time. I'll have to check that. It just. It feels to me, and I'm not saying that it's a. It's. A, he was trying to rip off anything, but it, it was getting at that same sentiment. Kind of sentiment. Yeah. 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 But I don't think, or as I think, um, Grant Morrison really, mm-hmm. really nailed it with Superman. I don't. I just feel like. I, maybe if the story had been a little longer. Maybe. Yeah, because it's only issues four longer. issues, which yeah. is. For a comic book miniseries now, that's it's short. Yeah, short. Yeah, it's you know, short. We're used it to like, yeah, like six, six to eight to yeah. twelve issue miniseries. Yeah. You know, F twelve yeah. issue, the brightest day, twenty like twenty four. Yeah. That's a miniseries. <laughs> yeah. that's uh, fuck that. F- yeah, I definitely they, think that um, with six issues, maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. I kind of I kind of felt that way too. Yeah, because um, yeah, it was definitely like choppy. Like here's yeah. him with the Fantastic Four. Cut. Here's him with Spider Man. Yeah. Cut. It wasn't like in between. There wasn't yeah. any fluid, like story arc. Yeah. Um, I almost wonder if the third, if the third chapter would have been a little bit more effective if he had just been, 
if he had just walked from that whole situation. I kind of wish that the third chapter was longer. Yeah. 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 It did. It did. It yeah. did leave you feeling like you wanted I, more I, from I, it. I really wish that. I don't know. I guess I feel like it was wrapped up all too tightly. I think yeah. it would have been nice if he had been able to kind of just walk away. From I want to say, like, you yeah. know what? That's kind of the great disappointment of my life is that I can't heal the universe. Yeah. I can't be everywhere at once. I do. I like this the story, and I but I think it's a good complaint when you're like, I wanted more. Yeah. I think it like yeah. speaks to how good the book is. Too, yeah, you know? that is true. Yeah. It's not like the worst criticism. Yeah. Like, I wish no, it were said. shorter. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I hear that. That's right. Yeah. Friday yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blackest night. Uh, <coughs> preacher. Preacher. Uh, <laughs> I'm just I'm throwing dust. it here. There was some dust in yeah, the room. I wonder what happened. I think I vomited. There's definitely books that could have benefited from being yeah. shorter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you didn't need that. I, yeah. You know, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Bernie, what'd you think? Oh, well, like, I picked it, so, like, I really liked it. That's right. First time I read it. Yeah. And, like, I read it, like, twice during the fortnight, air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, I really like how they did it because, like, it's really hard to get, like, a super overpowered character and have him, like, in a really good storyline that, like, challenges him. Mm -hmm. But, like, his mortality, that's a great way to challenge him. Yeah. Because everything dies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice because you never really think about, like, these cosmic characters for Marvel. Right. Super powered. And, like, super, like, immortal in other Yeah, 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 right? But, like, still. Galactus and, like, all these characters that are time you know yeah. infinite characters mm -hmm. it's cool to see like a finality to a character that like lives right. in that kind of infinite right. world i love marvel cosmic stuff so just yeah. like seeing galactus kind of gets gives me a half chub but um <laughs> i you know i don't know i love the book i thought it was good um it's like transfer from bernie to yeah yeah I, really quickly that was good this yeah. is like transition mm -hmm. that's what they call that in the biz <laughs> the biz <laughs> um I don't. The first chapter was not for me. Like, yeah, yeah it was really I, slow. You like, guys it was know kind of slow. how I don't. I hate the Fantastic Four. <laughs> I just know <laughs> there's nothing. What cool. about the Future Foundation? I yes, Spider Man again. I'm, there's nothing <laughs> yeah. you could do that would make me care enough to read a Fantastic Four book. I, don't know, I just feel like Fantastic Four is dated. Like, yeah, they feel just, super dated. Like, I don't know what it is. It's just that's my that's hard. my bad. Yeah. Not, yeah. It, there's nothing to do with Fantastic Four because I just don't read it. Like it's not that I like read them and don't like it. I just I just like it doesn't interest that's me. Sad, so yeah. when I try, I yeah. just I can't get into it. They don't relate to. I thought that Ultimate Fantastic Four was okay. Yeah, like, that's for right. a little I bit. I think you told me that. I, like the first traits. I actually have a, as much as I have a special place in my heart for Fantastic Four, Ultimate Fantastic Four, I blame for the whole Marvel Zombies thing, which I cannot, well, which yeah. I absolutely uh, detest. Yeah, that I, happened. I just hate, hate. That happened. That happened. <laughs> I, and I hate but, to be the one that brings it up, but yeah. I mean, no. I've not um, read any Marvel Zombies Me either. Stuff. I just kind of so I'm just like, yeah. it happened. I, yeah, you're lucky. Oh, I, read, I, read, I got sucked into the first one, and that was enough for me. Deadpool, Merc with a mouth, that kind of tied in, but I mean, yeah. let dabble. I, uh, and I stopped reading that too. <laughs> yeah. I like the book a lot. I think the third chapter is probably, like, in some ways, the strongest and the weakest chapter in the whole book. Mm -hmm. because Which one is that? The third one is the one where he goes to the alien planets. Right. There's, okay. there's two planets that have basically right. like, built their whole culture and civilization on fighting, fighting each the other. other culture, yeah. Yeah. religion, uh -huh. civilization. And although the concept was kind of like, I felt like it was trying to be poignant about, you know, two cultures that do not get along. Like, how do they get along? You know, end up getting along, <laughs> which I thought was yeah. interesting to um, to some extent for, for the Silver Surfer type character, like someone with ultimate power, you know. How do you tackle real world problems with ultimate power? And I don't know if the answer was like that he can't or that like he did, but I think the answer talking. of blowing everything up is <laughs> a bad answer. I don't yeah. think that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, yeah, how do you absolutely. solve real world problems like cultural differences? Blow everything yeah, up. Right. Like, uh, it was supposed to be this whole like, you know, I'll lay waste to both of you and then you'll both see that war is wrong. But it was like, really, no, you're just like, we needed bigger <laughs> guns. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 It falls to me because it's yeah. being told by the one surviving member or whatever. It's like, he showed us the air away. Yeah, they, they build a giant statue to him. It's like, no, I think. I think I really feel that what that was missing was 
am just going, you know, I can't do anything. Here. Yeah, and I like, really can't. And, and it's like it, that's more poignant. And admitting his own mortality, like, or not his mortality, but like his own limitations, and Ex- being yeah, like, right. exactly. shit, there's stuff I can't solve. Yeah. Even with the power cosmic, you yeah. can't Even solve with it. Everything. I think that's a much more I, powerful statement. I don't think that like destroys the book in any way, um, but no. I think the third chapter like could have been really. And I thought that the like the art in the third chapter is my favorite. Yeah, no, like, yeah, he yeah, designed yeah, some yeah, fucking yeah. awesome looking aliens, right? And some really Ships. cool starships and stuff, yeah. and just like a lot of really cool design work went into chapter three. So I liked it a lot, and it was different, yeah. and it was cool like Marvel cosmic-y stuff, and uh, yeah. I just felt like it. Given more time, that chapter could have been really cool, or you know, a different type of ending or something. You know, I, I just don't know. I like I liked it, but at the same time, the third chapter was it really took me out of the story. Mm-hmm. The oh, fourth yeah. chapter, though, yeah. I thought was great. Like where Super he great. goes home and everybody's yeah. sad. And my favorite was chapter two. I really. Liked, I like human Spider Man. I, 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 yeah. I thought that was that really was cool. the one that hit me the hardest. Yeah, yeah. When I, yeah. I, I just really kind of I was like. Because I've always looked at Spider-Man as kind of Marvel's everyman, you know? Yeah, I, I that's definitely, to, like... You know, he's just... He's trying to do his thing, and he really doesn't want to get caught up in the, in the drama, and it finds him a lot. But, yeah. yeah. You know, and just this kind of... That contrast between Peter Parker and Silver Surfer, they could not yeah. be farther apart. Yeah. And... They just kind of really hit this note together. And that really, I was like, that was cool. That was a yeah. really cool moment. Yeah, I think that, I agree. like, I don't like the Fantastic Four so much, but they were the first characters to see the Silver Surfer, so yeah. I understand why yeah. they're in there. Yeah. But I think that Spider-Man was, like, the perfect choice for Absolutely. the, if oh, you yeah. had another Absolutely. Marvel character. Right. And then, again, uh, Stephen Strange, who gave me a half chub when he showed up, because I forgot <laughs> yeah. he was in this, and yeah. I was like, yeah. ah! Jeez. Oh, I love I love Doctor Strange so much. <laughs> I've seen this uh, uh, total non sequitur here, but uh, ComicsAlliance.com does this thing where they uh, do reimagine popular properties as TV shows, and they reimagined uh, Strange. It's Strange, right? But in the style of House. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a show that uh, really, really needs to happen. Would, so it's like, uh, he cures mystical uh, maladies, but he's, he's pretty much house. <laughs> but he's house. That's so a, he will uh, get uh, you right. worse yeah. and yeah. then find a better spell to get you yeah, better exactly. right. every episode. Right. It's like, any doctor it's would be better than Cracker house, Jack right? team of <laughs> and people. Like, like good Wong, looking people. <laughs> good Wong looking people. is the chief resident yeah. or something nice. like that. Uh, it just it sounded really, really cool. Good. Yeah, yeah, I, I love Doctor Strange. I, yeah. I always will. But. He doesn't get a lot of love. He, he needs more love. He doesn't need more yeah. love. Yeah. He got some love in New Avengers, which is cool. But yeah, even yeah. after he lost his little title, yeah, to Doctor Voodoo. That's the don't. Even, that's so fucking dumb, Doctor Voodoo. <laughs> Did he go to fucking medical school <laughs> yeah, in the right. meantime when they're like, oh, Doctor Strange? Who went to fucking medical <laughs> school? Like ten years of goddamn medical school, like to fix. Real fucking medical issues, and, <laughs> and brother, brother voodoo, some uh, just oh, I'm a voodoo expert, and oh, now I'm the sorcerer supreme. Okay, I'm gonna take on the title doctor. <laughs> Fuck you. You don't get that name. You don't get it. Like oh, is it witch doctor voodoo? Like that's dumb. Like this is not <laughs> a good name. Papa voodoo is a better name. <laughs> Papa. Papa voodoo. Because when you voodoo. get promoted in the like, if you move up the whatever in the voodoo, in chain. voodoo yeah, in the chain in voodoo, <laughs> the brother is lower than Papa. Yeah. So that would have been cool. Plus, mm-hmm. Papa Voodoo sounds pretty bad. <laughs> hey, either way, Doctor Voodoo yeah, is way. fucking dumb. I think Bottom Papa line. Voodoo sounds like a like a chain of Cajun food restaurants, <laughs> which I would eat at. That's his it's secret either, identity. It's either a great like tiki bar like setup <laughs> down to Papa Voodoo. that I would drink heavily at, or fried chicken, Every night. or both like Cajun <laughs> and gumbo and alcohol and. That, I'm, I'm, that I'm popping a boner good. for that. Yeah. That's right. I'm, I'm pretty hungry right now. Uh, yes. <laughs> it seems good. Anyway. But yeah, comic overall, books. good. Good book. Good. I thought it was good. I highly recommend it. Yeah, no, I would recommend it. Especially to people who want to get acquainted with the Silver Surfer. Yeah, right. I often... Yeah. Like, I, you could just be like, yeah, but this is in a different universe. Yeah. Same powers. It, but... is, it is an Elseworlds story, which yeah. I guess is good to point out. Because yeah. he's, still he's still in Marvel him. Universe. Yeah. But it's a good... Like like Matt said, it's a good origin story, but yeah. still, like fatality ending story. Yeah. yeah, I do like, I do I do recommend this book to a lot of people when they come in. Um, 
but it's and great like, because it's like a origin story. You yeah, know? yeah, like, yeah. I feel like everybody in comics gets really tired of origin stories because mm-hmm. every superhero has one. That this is a cooler way to do an origin. Yeah, story. it's right. it's well, def. Oh no, well, no, well, I was just well, gonna, I was, no, I was just gonna say it's definitely like like you said, like an alternative to an origin story. Yeah. Like it's it's an origin story in disguise, and yeah. it is great. Yeah. Um, it's more than meets the eye. Yeah, well, I think it'll get you curious. About Transformers. The yeah. Because, you know, it's like, oh, okay, so what else has this guy done? And then yeah. you're like, oh, read Conquest or read whatever. Uh, yeah. Annihilation. Yeah. Annihilation. <laughs> so good. Yeah. And, like, the only other trade of just Silver Surfer is, like, In Thy Name, which okay. is poo. I haven't read it. It doesn't look great. I hear everything. It's just like everyone's like, nah, nah, it's poop. Uh, I, what, I, uh, I, wik- I Wikipedia'd this just to see when it, like, when it came out and see if there's anything else I could find out about it and... And yeah, even on Wikipedia, which is supposed to be like objective, objective, they're like, mm. no, <laughs> no, <laughs> we're gonna link you back to Requiem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, re- just read, name. just, just you, read Requiem you, again. You type Silver Surfer in my name into Google, and it's like, did you mean Silver Which's Surfer Requiem? Requiem? <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. All right, uh, books. That's books. done now. More books done. This uh, Fortnite, this Fortnite's choices yeah. are yeah. Well, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, we need some like what is that? What was that show? You are the weakest link. We need some weakest link uh, music uh, right now. I watched that <laughs> Doctor Who the other day. Actually, she guest starred on an episode of the first season of Doctor Who, the new, the new Doctor Who, the new like oh, the with series Eccleson? or whatever. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. She actually played her a uh, robot version of herself. Oh yeah, when they're in the <laughs> nice. space station. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I watched that one. I saw that. I seen. I seen that. <laughs> yeah. So many right. people are coming in for Doctor Who in the shop now. Yeah. Like, well, Doctor Who's last Saturday. Up. It's like it's coming up. It's, it was what? before. It was like super hipster. Kind of underground. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's like everywhere. Main Everyone's screen. watching it. So. So just, all the hipsters are going. Just so that we're clear. Just so that we're clear. Did you fucking look this up in the middle all of the show? All Star Superman ran from 2005 to 2008. Yeah, but what what, ep- what issue did that? Specific. Uh, I don't know. But somewhere between. Oh, I'm not doing just in. just for clarification. Yeah, yeah. Of what we said earlier. Just because you know. So. Because you, you gotta be. You gotta be right all the time. Every time. I am. That's fine. He's like, 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 I'm not gonna do the math, but I am gonna say I'm right. I am like. You just right. gotta do this. Uh, on the air. <laughs> on air. <laughs> you gotta. Every day. You gotta be right, huh? Uh, and that's, that's why this is his first episode. Yeah, first and last episode. I am the angle opposite the high hotness. I am always right. Yeah, that's math jokes. Uh, Yay! Lost on this crowd. It's never funny to me. That's an episode of Better Off Ted, they say that. Yeah, I don't watch the show. Pretty great show. I I definitely watched it. it. Didn't it get canceled? It it got canceled after the second season. I started watching it. Which is how you can tell it's I kind of liked it. But then I was like, (laughs) yeah. Because it didn't go 13 seasons. And two movies. Portia de Rossi's on that show, right? Yes, she was. Excellent. Excellent performance by I dig her. She's pretty badass. She is. Hey, making lots of noise, man. What's going on over there? That was Andrew beating me. (laughs) (laughs) Ever fucking correct me. (laughs) Ever again. All right. um, Okay, starting with choices. Who wants to go first? Anyone? Anyone? I'll go first. All right, all right. right. Would you like to go first? No, no, go. go, No, No, I insist. No, go go right ahead, sir. I bought... I brought with me. The, I, he uh, bought the, the Dark Knight Strikes Again, and I did buy this. I uh, paid money for this tonight, and I I don't regret it. Um, Dark Knight Strikes Again. I both rue and lamented. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't regret it. Um, I'm kind of putting this out there because I think that the Dark Knight Returns is a really um, polarizing book. It, it's a book I that changed the way I looked at comic books, but it's also a book that I think everybody receives differently. Uh, but you can't, you kind of can't turn your back that it's something, it was important. When it was written, it was important. And this is not. Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah. How can you follow up one of the, as, and I mean, I think you have to include it as an essential Batman story. I think whether yeah. you agree it was poorly written or, or the yeah. worst thing ever, it was, a, um, it was a big deal. It was a yeah. big deal. And I think yeah. how you followed it up with this is beyond me. I think there are some great ideas in here, but I think it's also obvious that this was not the same labor of love. But 
I think that it should still be red. I think it should be red for contrast, and I think it should be red because I really kind of count this as the beginning of uh, Frank Miller's, I, I want to call it a slide, but really he leapt like laughing into the arms of insanity, really. Started. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, really. I mean, you could say to Helen Beck, but I can't remember which one came out first. So, like, he wrote to um, Helen Beck for Sin City, which was the yeah. last collection, which was kind of not great. I and then not. he read, I think, and then he wrote this, or he wrote them around the same time. And it was just like, um, Mr. Miller, I think that you might need to be on medication. <laughs> So, but I think it should still be read because there are, if you can take it for what it is, if you can take, if you can not look at this as the sequel to one of the most polarizing Batman stories ever told and just look at it as a Batman story, there's some very, very cool stuff in here. Uh, and so that's kind of why I chose it. I have not read this yet, so I've always wanted to. I, I, I like Dark Knight Returns I, quite I, a bit. I've had bits of it. Yeah. I yeah. have read it cover to cover um, and I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, it's, it's nothing great, um, and it is hard because I did read it right after, oh, um, yeah. and that that kind of killed it for me. Like I literally put it down and was like, Ugh! and I had to come back about two or three years later and read it again to really kind of appreciate it for mm -hmm. its qualities. But you're you, every, you hit the nail on the head with with everything else you said. It it is. It's kind of he's slowly you can tell he's turning nuts like, as he's as you read it you can feel his slow descent into i'm gonna say just insanity just yeah, i mean yeah. yeah um but at the same time i'm a hardcore batman fan i i love batman i love everything batman and i do as much as it hurts me to say this there's a special place in my heart for that book so He's got plastic man in it. I mean, yeah, I yeah. Oh, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, am, well, I heard Wally West in it too, so I'm like, oh, I want to read. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Okay. Bernard. So my choice yeah. was Deadpool's fourth volume of just Deadpool, not Deadpool Merch with a Mouth, Monkey Business. And that's this is the run with him teaming up with Spider Man oh. to face what is probably the only hitman that Deadpool's afraid of, which is. Not a man, but a monkey. Uh, hit monkey. Hit monkey. Hit monkey. And that's like the introduction. I don't hit monkey. I'm not too the biggest fan of, but just like Deadpool, his whole inner monologue, and then like Spider Man's witty banter, and then just them going back and forth. And I could read for like days. The fucking brilliant covers by Scotty Young. Yes, that all of them. I own all of them. Like, oh, so good. Uh, gotta love some Scotty Young. Yeah. And then it's just like, it was great because they, they would just go off on like tangent storylines, but then come back and just like, oh, it's all a dream. But that was pretty sweet because <laughs> they need a montage. This was after the X-Men one, right? Yes, it was I right think, after the yeah, X-Men. the X-Men one is the last one I read. So yeah. I'm, I kind of want to read that one. But too. I mean like, uh, so what's it? So many choices. So <laughs> many. I forgot what I was going to say now. I don't know. I interrupted. But it was okay. I'm sorry. It happens. I apologize. You better apologize. I did. But it happens. Yeah, it's not happening again. No. I mean, Maybe. I mean, I I'm going to interrupt you again, but <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to apologize this time. <laughs> that was not happening again, the apology. No, that was the last one. Yeah. Only. Only one. Yeah, Matt. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. All right. Go. Yeah, go. Go. yeah right. definitely. Jesus. All right. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Andy. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. No. All right. So uh, I picked Desolation Jones. Um, it is a book by Warren Ellis. Uh, the artist by J.H. Williams uh, III. The third. The third. Can't forget that the third, um, and I, it's uh, it's a story about basically a person who worked for MI6, where they did basically the some tests on him. He's a test subject for a desolation uh, program, and it basically just it fucked him up bad, like just <laughs> bad. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to put it. He's he like he can't go in the sun, or he can, but it hurts him. Um, and he's just like, uh, he looks like a crack addict, and it, I'm pretty sure he is. Um, but uh, I love Warren Ellis. Uh, there's, uh, there's just, I mean, it's a, it, I, there's no way to explain a Warren Ellis story really, other than to just read it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> you have to live. It. Yeah, yeah. You just, yeah. you. I mean, really, like every Warren Ellis book I read, I or not, I shouldn't say every one I read, I love, but every Warren Ellis story I read. 
it almost feels like a train wreck that you just can't, you have to know what happens yeah. next. And there's really, he has such a, a skewed perspective of the world that it's just, it's a treat, really. I mean, you feel like you must be fucked in the head to like it, but at the same time, you do. Like, I always, I'm always hesitant to recommend this to people because I'm afraid of what they're going to think of me for liking it. <laughs> but at the same time, I still do. And, and almost every person that I recommend a Warren Ellis story to, as long as it's the right Warren Ellis story, yeah. Yeah. they yeah. will yeah. feel the same way. They will enjoy it, and they'll always come back and be like, well, do you like it? And they're kind of like, uh, yeah, I mean, I did, but it's really weird. And, <laughs> and I'm like, that's Warren Ellis. I mean, um, so beyond that, I mean, there's a lot of violence in it. Um, there's a, I mean, it's a great story. It, it was, uh, started in 2005. Um, there is only one trade, um, That's out. Really my only problem. Yeah, it, this, it feels really, what happened is I, I looked this up and I believe he made it through nine issues. The first or eight issues, the first story arc is six. Um, and it's called made in England. And then he went on to do two more issues of the next story arc and then went on hiatus. Um, and I guess on multiple occasions he said that he wants to go back and finish it, but I mean that's among, Warren Ellis. Among the I mean, among the among the, the yeah yeah, yeah. I mean among the the uh, Doctor Sleepless, um, Ocean, uh, Ocean yeah. Bell, right? Bell, he did Bell. Right? Yeah, Bell I mean, absolutely brilliant. I, I think we so, did. Did we recommend it, Bell? At least I think. I, I think, yeah, so, I think it needs to be recommended because yeah. him and Ben Templesmith are. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, yeah, he's just like, I'm fucking Warren Ellis. I'm not going to finish this story. I mean, uh, Agents of Hate was another one that he... Yeah, English that and just, City, too. Yeah, he that he said just, he was going to do more. And... So, I don't I ever... Don't ex- want to do any more Agents of Hate, though, because that was perfect. Yeah, but that I... Was no, I, I will perfect. never... There will never be enough Agents of Hate <laughs> no, for me. I agree with you, but if he doesn't do any more, then I don't have to take the chance of him fucking it up somehow. Yeah. Not that he would. Not that he would. I, I but, just, like... I, I guess that yeah, like that you can't really capture lightning in a bottle twice yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. That's the, that book is. I recommended it. No one wanted to read it. I don't know what happened uh, there. I picked, I I picked it. it. Whatever. Which one? Yes. Brought it yeah, Which I think one? I brought it. Last Agent, uh, Agents of Hate. Next wave. Agents yeah. of Hate. Uh, I don't remember that at all. Okay. Well, I just. We my, should pick that. Memory. We should throw a curveball and I'll pick that for yeah. this one. <laughs> but that book's brilliant. Read that again. That's yeah. another recommendation. If it's uh, got Warren Ellis on the title, you're 50-50 that it's, 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 you're 100% <laughs> that it's brilliant. You're 50-50 on whether you'll need therapy afterwards. That's yeah. pretty much what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and just one, one other quick thing. Um, I'm not gonna, I don't know much of J.H. Williams, Williams III's work um, other than this, but I was actually I was impressed. I, I really feel like uh, going through the book, like, the art does a great deal to show you kind of how nuts the character of Desla- of Jones is. I mean, um, the way he can s- switch styles uh, yeah. is just amazing, and I and I don't really see that in a lot of art yeah. in comic books. He's got some like, depth, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so that's something that I that I really felt like added a lot to the story. I think it's one of the one of the other brilliant things about Warren Ellis is that he's really brilliant about doing that. He really is amazing at finding an artist that will really best articulate yeah. his work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, ben, he does it with Ben Temple Smith and Fell Transmet, which is my favorite thing to read. Uh, with Derek Robertson and M. Stuart Emmerman and uh, yeah, for oh, and next week. Yeah. yeah. Just so. uh, everything. He's always really good at that. John Cassidy and Planetary. And yeah. yeah. Also Scars. I think he did. Which is one of those books that you will need to keep your therapist on speed dial <laughs> to read. Yeah. And uh, one one other thing that I just kind of want to bring up is the question was posed: Why would I pick Desolation Jones um, <laughs> to uh, over uh, other over was other that a jerk with uh, Ellis? Yeah, <laughs> I over agree, over I mean, other anyone? Ellis works. Um, <laughs> and I just want to say I'm a huge fan of Ellis, and he does. He has a a, a vast um, pool of books to pick from. And uh, for those of you that are keeping track, I, my first pick for our podcast ever was Orbiter, which is another Ellis book. Uh, the reason I picked Desolation Jones and also the reason I picked Orbiter is because I feel like a lot of people know Warren Ellis, but these two books are, are his lesser-known works that I've really enjoyed. Right. Yeah. Fell, so. I think, the same way. Yeah, which I, I didn't even know. I haven't even heard of until now. You haven't so heard of Fell? I have not heard of Fell. Oh, so I, I'm going to go. I thought you about it. Yeah, 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 I'm going to take it home. I own it. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm great. Gonna, 
I will get it. But yeah, uh, yeah. okay. So um. cool, cool. J. Trillian the third recently has done Batwoman elegy. Really? Yeah, he did Batwoman with Greg Rucka, and he's writing and drawing the next story arc for that. And I feel like he did something else that I really like that I can't think of off the top of my head. I, it's, yeah, I can't think I'm of trying it. to think, but it's. Uh, yeah, but he's good. He's really good. I mean, he did covers of stuff. From yeah, I've time. I've seen I I recognize art and some covers of stuff. But yeah. yeah, I mean, this is really this was one of the first like trades where I really got a chance to kind of see a lot of his work, and yeah. I and I enjoyed it. I really I thought it complemented Ellis's writing fantastically. Yeah, he's he's good at that. So cool. All right, All right. Uh, I'm last, so I picked um, the killer. Which is a French graphic novel. <laughs> that was a question mark at the end of The Killer. <laughs> I brought two books, and I wasn't sure which one I was going to pick. But I went, uh, I went with The Killer. Um, it's a French graphic novel that uh, Arcadia or Arcaea, Arcaea uh, something, Studio Press, has been translating into English. Um, it's written by Matz, M-A-T-Z, and illustrated by Luke Jackmon. Um, and it's the story of a hitman, and I've been, I love hitman stories, and even though a lot of them are really, really bad, <laughs> and like over complicated, and like, oh, I'm gonna pay you $40 million to do this job, so we're gonna paraglide out of a G6 <laughs> into a, you know, into the penthouse apartment, and rolling and shooting guns, and making it look like an accident, I don't know, it's just fucking overly <laughs> elaborate. Hitman not, stories, oh, yeah, God, right. Uh, and and uh, I watched um, uh, the mechanic with uh, <laughs> oh, uh, um, Jason Statham. Jason Statham, the, the staff. Which the staff. I, you know, I I had fun. I mean, it's I a like, Jason Statham movie. Yeah, I like, like yeah. Hitman stuff. I wasn't disappointed, but at the same time, part of me is like, what the fuck is? No Hitman <laughs> ever <laughs> has done half the shit that this guy does. Um, Fake. A dead man swimming. Yeah, just what the <laughs> fuck? Just weird shit. But, like, this book is so much more down-to-earth, so much more realistic, air quotes, of what a hitman would be like. I mean, he spends, like, the first couple... Pa- yeah, I'm looking at you, Bernie. Hit monkey is totally monkey realistic. <laughs> Number but one hitman in the universe. He spends, like, the first... <laughs> he spends, like, a good chunk of the book just sitting in a room smoking waiting for a guy to show up so he can just shoot him in the head which i feel like is kind of like <laughs> what a hit man and he starts to kind of lose it because he's been alone for too long and he's like i gotta get home i gotta get to, pe- to talk to people and like <laughs> starting to kind of uh, as he waits for this guy to die to so he can kill him um and there's uh it's just this great kind of like watching this guy he really should be super afraid of because he's fucking kills a shit ton of people in this book. He's a scary man that can just like dissociate this well about murder. But he's also a really fascinating character because there is stuff he loves. There are people that he loves and he, you know, has to kind of keep his world together as, you know, people are trying to stop him from being a hitman. Uh, the art in this book is fucking gorgeous. Um, I'm gonna try to open to a page that doesn't have titties on it. Um, I'm there. And yeah, there's titties right. in the Why book. I'm it? sorry. I was gonna say. I, I, was gonna I say, failed to mention I've, that up front. But, I've already <laughs> decided my pick. But the uh, there's just some like this really cramped like French cityscapes, but also these just like kind of gorgeous jungle scene. I'm kind of holding it open for everybody to see. Really, there's pictures. Yeah, this is, oh, <laughs> thank a you, comic bro. with pictures. <laughs> I'm um, there. There's, <laughs> there's really nice art. I like it a lot. A lot of different cool settings. And That's a different I like how it's using yeah, like a lot of titties. different hues. Oh, ooh. Got titties for you. There's a crocodile and stuff. Um, it's cool. Like I really like the book. I le- I give it to a lot of people. And I'm like, this book is awesome. And they always come back and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because that guy is the, the scariest book I've ever read. And I was like, what? He's just a normal guy that kills people. How is that weird? So, but it's it's good. It's a hitman story. It's really cool. There's three of these volumes out so far. This is ongoing. But there's, I think a total of six were written. So they're in the process of like translating them and moving them over to English. Um, it's taken a long time, but yeah. it's pretty good. I really like this series quite a bit. Um, Just like a side note, when you flipped it open, and there was like way different hues because there was like 
yeah. bright greens and then oh, like yeah. dull Those colors. Yeah. Like it's very I, done yeah. as well. Luke Jackman does the pencils, inks, and colors. It's that the French style of, or just like the European style of comic books where they take a lot longer than 30 days to do each issue so that they look really nice when they're done. You know, they're not they're not set to our kind of like monthly book schedule. It's especially important to the French to look really nice. Yeah, and the presentation is really nice. Like the hard covers are all really good in, in, in America too. So um, it's a good book. I love these. I love all three of them. I think they're great. Um, I just, def- definitely highly recommend this book. Yeah, just looking at it, it would look nice on a shelf. It does look really good on it. So they all look like this. It's like nice black spine and yeah. I took the dust jacket off yeah uh, there's a cool dust jacket and he's like silhouetted walking down a, a desolate road <laughs> with a gun and it looks sweet but like I always throw my men actually do that That's yeah unlike flying uh, paraglider yeah <laughs> into that mansion and roll yeah I'm sure he's, touch and roll he's I'm sure yeah, he's actually, hitmen they, have walked through the rain before well they they find they go out of their way to find deserted streets <laughs> De- desolate on, roads gonna, just in case someone snaps there's, there's, uh, there's like a picture or a film or photographer or yeah so that they can be silhouetted. It's very, they actually have somebody follow them around with like a light. So they yeah. can be back. Yeah. yeah. I, maybe during the sunset too. They, yeah, they look yeah, for every, it's a, it's every sunset right before yeah. they sleep. In France, that's they're their, everywhere. Yeah. They're everywhere. That's cool story, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They don't have the dust jacket anymore. I throw, <laughs> I, I throw all my dust jackets away. Why? Because I don't like them. I, well, it does. It's like. Up or something. It does like. Or what? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I used to have I used to have a shoebox full of dust jackets. I did. I had a box full, and then I I moved, and I was like, "Why the fuck do I still have this garbage?" Yeah, it's just it's really awkward to read with a dust jacket. I hate it. I take them up, but I keep them. I'm like that though. I'm very anal retentive about that. I couldn't. I couldn't. I'll just I'll like. Oh, I'm putting it back on the shelf. Dust jacket. I'll have. I have the best intentions of keeping my dust jackets, and they'll get like. Fucking fucked up. Because well, (laughs) (laughs) what is the dust jacket even for? Dust! Yeah, but like it doesn't really do a very good job. Guess what? I dust my house. Like, yeah, I don't. But like, if I did, I wouldn't need a dust jacket. Yeah. yeah. No, no. They, I don't know. Dust I think they look still shitty. Still get on it. The dust it jackets look like bad. That. Yeah. Uh, if they got, if I'm gonna get a hardback book, like I want it to look like a hardback <laughs> book, not, not like look a like a like a paper like a paperback. Cover. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's 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 my pick. I don't know. If, I don't know if I did a good job of pitching that, but it's good. I like it. Action, killing, <laughs> boobies. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I was gonna say. You you said boobies. I said boobies. I tried. So, and I, I mean, was there. Penis yeah. was enough to sell orc stain to everybody. That's so right. titty everybody. should be enough to sell yeah. this one. I, I'm gonna laugh when it's not picked now, because yeah. you wow. said dicks, and we're all like, we're in. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like boobies, and we're like, we'll go with whoa. hit monkey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> um, I do also like that in that episode. I was like, there's a lot of dick in this comic. And then when we came back a fortnight later, yeah. uh, it was, there's too much dick. And I was like, I warned you guys. Well, like, that, was, that was mainly well. Thor. That well, was everyone is just <laughs> cutting. The whole part with the uh, chopping up like, and dick used as money, I kind of had a problem with. Yeah, I, lo- I made Joe read it. I love, <laughs> I love that part. I like the guide of like how to turn a dick into money. Yeah. In the that was, I feel like that was a little much. Like I read no, the guide and I was like, enough. I was like, <laughs> I felt that not to write that, you had to put a lot of thought into yeah, it. Yeah, he's thought about it. And <laughs> that's not weird. That's I uh, I felt I I'm felt like it. Yeah. Thorough. Thorough <laughs> research. It's, what is it like saying in a shower one day looking at a Yeah, shower that's shower? what that's what I feel I'm imagining like. Imagining he No, no I feel like he like, shape as a coin. I feel it's like I feel like, like he took it a step further and probably killed someone. Like Da Vinci. I'm castrated saying, them hobos, and then worked no with it. No one cares about them. No one cares about Da Vinci hobos. did it. I would like da Vinci to say that we are not advocating dick uh, killing hobos. Like hobo homicide. Uh, right. I, I am. I'm advocating. I'm going I'm to take a stand and I say I do. Have you seen California? I'm, Alex, I'm advocating <laughs> dick money. Have you seen Downtown Olympia? Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. I, 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 so, I mean. I'm not saying if anything. I just want to take a stand and say that right now, as Oprah Winfrey's Fortnightly Book Club, we are advocating killing the hobos. You're going to speak for all of us. Everyone. I am speaking for all okay. of us. I Even the do person not I here. advocate the murder of hobos. I'm sorry. Well, this is your first I do have advocate the <laughs> And last. <laughs> I do have ever advocate the killing of. Todd McFarland. So oh. if you wanted to turn his, I mean, there's probably not much there, but 
Oh. Haunt is oh. a fantastic. Oh. I just want to say Todd. that. Todd. Hey, you know what? Todd knows he's got it coming. Yeah. He does. He's he got does. baseball money. <laughs> he's got. He's he got can all hire bodyguards. Right? If you can get to him, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he'll get anywhere he's, near him. He's what? Like, because I know that's not true. He's, he's like one of the top paid writers in Hollywood. Is he? Sort of heard last. What? Really? Yeah. What? Carlin Carlin writes maybe like Todd? animated. Yeah. Todd. Seth. My bad. No, there you go. <laughs> Seth. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, Reference. Cool. Win. Yeah. No. Todd. Todd McFarlane's got all that crazy baseball action figure yeah. money. So. Yeah. He does. Unfortunately, it's not enough to buy him anything approaching a personality. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was. Fine. I gotta respect the guy. Uh, as I much know. as, as <laughs> much as you, you want to give him shit and everything, but I, I respect him. He what? saw he saw a market. Uh, oh, not for anything he's done in comic books. Fuck that. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was like. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> your money you paid. But uh, he kind of invented like adult action figures. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah, and that's, that's, that was yeah, a that market that no one saw coming. And he had to convince Toys R Uses to carry them, and they didn't carry them. And he had to convince like GameStops to carry them, and they sold really well. So. He kind of like in your face, Toys R Us. Yeah, he kind of created <laughs> yeah. a whole new market. Yeah, I, McFarlane I respect Toys. Him, I no, guess, that's fantastic. For that, yeah. but no, nah, not for comic books. I mean, Spawn's like a shitty Batman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the shittiest in the worst Batman. possible way. Actually, it's really funny too because you know they did they did the crossover, and you know who wrote the Batman side of the Batman Spawn crossover? Because of course Todd McFarlane took care of the Spawn side. Well, yeah. Who else? Uh, and, and prestige, prestige format, right? Mm-hmm. Who did the Batman Frank side? Miller and Klaus Johnson. Nice. And, uh, well, ended, this sounds like something I should actually well, read. Yeah, yeah. If you can track it down, read it. It's funny because it ends with Spawn literally with a bat ring right down the middle of his face. Oh. So when Spawn has shoelaces in his face, that is from that. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Did not. Fun actually, facts. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Fun facts of the day. He throws it over his shoulder. He's like, I don't. I, I want nothing to tell you. That's exciting. I I want to track that down now. Yeah. Boom, Boom headshot. Excited. I can see the I, yeah. I can see the, the glee in, the glee in my face. I can see the boner through his pants. Bad the man. sparkle yeah. in his eye. It looks real nice. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank cool. you. All right. Mom just call me old man comic book. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Learning things. Yeah. It's not something we usually do on the show. Yeah. Present facts or anything of any use to anyone. We should just hey, make up one. numbers and. That was before me. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And you we bring some credibility bad to the show. I don't <laughs> yeah, that's right. Think we, we can handle. I don't think we can handle yeah. the credibility. All right. Cool. All right. So I guess we All right. vote. So we now, it, now, uh, Matt, what would you like to read this month? You can't know voting for your own book. <sighs> yeah, You've never been fine. here before. Yeah. But. Um, I think I'm gonna go with uh, Deadpool. All right. Just because, well, just because I've already read uh, the Dark, Dark Knight Returns again. Or Sharks again. Yeah. Thank you. But uh, <laughs> but you haven't read the Killer Matt. But you, know, you haven't read the Killer Matt. I'm I'm gonna go with Deadpool. But you haven't read the Killer. Ki- <laughs> All right. We get, we get <laughs> We've done that before. Right. Usually because I vote last, I just don't make it a full way time. <laughs> I just choose to not make it a full way time. Yeah. I changed my vote. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what happens. That Bernie, what, what do you what do you want? I was what do you going read? for Desolation Jones. All right. Just because like I want to see him <laughs> totally get it's, it. it's this happens right. every, every time. Every time. single time. We really need to get odd numbers. Going for the killer. All right. Well, we tried to have on our store was so severe tonight, but he broke his 800th phone, and no one can fucking find him. If you just called Best Buy. Well, yeah, but he probably wasn't even at work. He's in right. fucking I don't know some godforsaken place, washed up in a ditch. So he could be anywhere. He's probably at work. Um, he could be anywhere. Like home. Literally, anything brought in the Himalayas right now. It could happen. You don't know. So, Joe, you're going with the killer. I, I think I'm going to go with the killer. I read Desolation Jones, and uh, I like Deadpool, but I'm just not feeling it. Um, well, as much as I would love to re- vote for Batman. Um, <laughs> just do it, Dark and then Man we have to read again. all of them. Because uh, I haven't read it yet, and I kind of want to read it. I might read it anyway. Um, I think I'm going to go with Desolation Jones this, this, uh, this fortnight. Woo, because, that's the first time my book's been picked. Yay! Because <laughs> uh, I haven't read it, and it seems kind of interesting. And I, I do like Warren Ellis a lot. And uh, mm-hmm. I haven't seen enough J.H. Uh, Williams artwork going around. I, I like his stuff, and I don't, he doesn't do enough interior stuff, I think. I think he's really good, so I'm going to go with that. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, all right. All right. Cool, cool. 
cool, 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 cool. Uh, wrap I'm, up. I'm still gonna read the killer. Yeah, you yeah. can take. That being definitely. said, I will, I will be reading the killer. Yeah, yeah, as well. it's good. Yeah, definitely take it home. Uh, and just like every month, you know, even the books. We're just like Fortnite. Even the books read. we don't read, you should read. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, it's your obligation as an American to read them. Read them. If you don't read them, terrorists win. Um, you know, yada yada yada. Uh, same things we say every week. Um, but as a wrap up, let's do our special edition DC reboot. <laughs> oh, DC oh yeah! Man. <laughs> I totally yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, yeah I want to do this. Comic I want to do this. I want to okay, talk okay. about it. Okay, so before this, before right okay. before, I just want right. to add this. Sneak this in. But uh, you know how, like two episodes ago, we were talking total crap about Green Lantern. Yeah. I heard early reviews was like, eh, it's okay. And I'm just like, it's still going to be poop. But yeah. I mean, like, it's okay now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm, Do I, not go and see the Green Lantern movie. I know that this will reach you too late to save you from the horror that is the Green Lantern That's movie. That's true. We'll reach them yeah. way too late. No, years, no, years, years, years possibly. Probably. You can hear the sound of my voice. Don't go and see it. By the time this comes out, we will be on the third movie of the trilogy. <laughs> and it'll be a blockbuster and success. It, yeah. and won't we look dumb? Yeah. We're, it's like, I don't damn, care if it's just the a first sequence. one. Yeah. Was poop. Yeah. All right. I, should we warn him not to go and see the sequel to Avatar then? Or is that the timeline we're talking about? Just... Uh, I don't know. I didn't see the first one. Don't I apparently am the only one on the planet that did not see I did not enjoy it. It was James Cameron's man, Avatar. Like, did you watch it in 3D IMAX? I watched, I got the whole nine yards, and seriously, I would have rather spent that time being kicked in the crotch by a mule. I that's didn't a, watch I it. feel like that's extreme, <laughs> but I agree. <laughs> 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 Like, seriously, I, 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 I just watch it regularly, and I'm just like... Just regular-ass TV. Regular-ass movie. To, and I'm just one, like, of my, one, of one of my complaints, one of my complaints, if you Thank take you. out the storyline completely, um, is I, I literally felt like there was too much 3D. Like... I, I, is there such a thing as too well, much 3D? Well, this is what I'm... This is, this is an example. It was 3D, it was almost 4D. Like, yeah. like this is the example I'm going to use. There is a scene where they're... Wa- or many scenes where they're walking through the forest, and there's flies and stuff. And literally, you're like, uh, like I'm swatting away the flies, and it just gets annoying. Like I'm like, I get it. It's 3D. I get it. Okay, I understand. Thank like, you. like you I that. still think that the best 3D movie I've ever seen, which I saw when I was 3D, 10, obviously. no, was uh, Captain EO oh, starring well, yes. Michael Jackson. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that movie was fucking awesome. There was like a lady made out of garbage, and was shit was flying out of the screen. And I was ten, and I had a boner. Yeah, it was amazing. great. It, was it reached amazing. its target demographic. <laughs> Michael Jackson yes. talks to ten year olds. And your mom never I, let you to go to Neverland. Ever. No, I didn't get to go to Neverland Ranch. I'm disappointed. It's, it's sad. But yeah. that was a good. A two million dollar sediment later, <laughs> you could have had. I could have had anything. Yeah. yeah. No, thanks, mom. <laughs> Fucking ruining my life again. Uh, no, I, I I don't get the appeal of 3D at all. I saw Tron in 3D. That was the most recent movie I saw in 3D. That, this, that's actually the first movie I saw in 3D since Captain Neo. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't I liked the movie Tron, but I, the 3D was completely unnecessary. Yeah, it, just, I, it, was, it, was, uh, yeah. it really is. I mean, there's uh, a time and a place for it. I, I think. But that time and a place in the fifties, or a children's movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I really just feel at the end of the day that they, that it's just they're just trying to pump more money out of oh, us. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's nuts because you pay what? How much? Like a four dollar, five dollar surcharge? Increase, yeah. yeah. For this, and there's for no poop. way. There is no way it costs that much, and especially the way they take movies now that, and they're not shot in three D. They yeah. just make yeah. them three D afterwards. Yeah. And then they use the recycled shitty glasses that you put back in the box and they repackage yeah. and it's... I yeah. did hear, though, that Jackass 3D on the DVD, there's an option for red, blue, black, and... Or red, red, blue uh, yeah. 3D. That I'm all oh, about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, my eyes don't fuse. Yeah. So I, as a child, I never... I can't use the... Really? The, yeah, I can't. Oh, they, man. So for years, I would, wa- I would try to watch things in 3D, and I never got it. Like, it never worked. I just saw the two... Because my eyes don't work that way. And I was, oh, I literally man. thought, I was like, why? This is dumb. Like, I'm, I'm broken. And then I, I went to the doctor and found broken. out I, I, I really was broken. Yeah. 
That's so sad. Yeah, so Why? That is so t- so story. to experience <laughs> 3D. Is yeah, to experience 3D, <laughs> so I have to do this. Show your story with everybody. That's right. This is why we, yeah, yeah, that's right. Weep for me. Weep. This is equivalent to that little girl that could not feel pain. Yeah, it is. I mean, yeah, it's that same thing. It is exact that level. Who's that level? That's something like that. Yeah. I I feel like I should get a car or. Uh, yeah. uh, something, some a dryer. Sort of, a a dry, I'll take a dryer. A popcorn maker. That would be that bees. Be bees. Bees. I would love some bees. Get some honey. Some sweet, sweet, sweet nectar. Sweet nectar. Sweet mm. nectar. Fresh nectar every morning. Okay, so we're gonna talk about this DC. Yeah. Okay. DC reboot. Reboot. All right. September 2011. Apparently, I want to get angry again. So, let's do a quick recap of DC Comics. DC Comics. So, quick recap. In the beginning of DC Comics. No. So, for the first Golden Age, Silver Age, DC Comics were one continuity, and then they did a event in 1985. Called Christ on Infinite Earth, which and you should read. We, yeah, yeah, which we, we Joe and I were talking about today. Everyone should read it, even though it's hard to get through. I still oh love my it. Gosh. Infinite Crisis? No, Christ Crisis on, on Infinite, Infinite Earth. Earth. Yeah, yeah, okay. In, in eighty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I love and it. And a footnote to that, really quick. Um, reading that book will put into reference. Um, uh, Watchmen, Watchmen and, make and uh, the and the Dark Knight yeah, Returns. If you if you've ever read Dark Knight Returns and or Watchmen and gone, I don't understand why this is special. Read it Three back days. to back with Crisis on Infinite Earths, and you will shit your pants. It'll, you will it's understand a breath why. Breath of fresh air yeah. compared to <laughs> Crisis on Infinite Earths. Be- but not to knock on Crisis on Infinite Earths, I still fucking love that book. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's brilliant and it's ambitious and it was yeah. ambitious in its time. When people in the business were not yeah. being ambitious, never been done before or I mean, since. A yeah, I was gonna say even reboot. even now to think just to think about the concept, the grandeur yeah. of it. Okay. It really, it really, it was epic, okay. and it yeah. is epic. It is, yeah. Yeah. In the scale, yeah. So rebooted in '85. Jump ahead to uh, 20 years later to 2005. Uh, an event called. Infinite Crisis was supposed to do the same thing. That was the idea. Which was a total they were going to well, reboot we, the entire yeah. universe again. And what was this, my understanding is they're going to reboot the whole universe. And I don't know what happened. If that was wrong information that got released to the press. If people just assumed that that was what it was going to be. Because it was a reference to Crisis on Infinite Earth. Because it had Crisis, Crisis on the right, title. And Infinite. You know. yeah. But like. Either that or halfway through, they chickened out and were like, ah, we can't undo our cotton. Yeah, <laughs> scary. And, uh, or whatever happened. But, um, so they didn't do it then. And so we got kind of a weird partial continuity reimagining. And we got the multiverse back, which no one has done anything with. So, yeah. complete waste of time. Um, but for DC, though, they made a yeah, yeah, they made some cash on that. On that and versus and the card game played. system was destroyed thanks to yep. uh, upper deck leaking events from Infinite Crisis. Oh, yep. So th- we can thank that. And then we can thank them for Fifty Two. And... Fifty Two actually really like, but Countdown to in- to Final Crisis, yeah. not good. Yeah, and also completely unrelated to Final Crisis, which pretty is, much kind of fucking wrong of you yeah. to halfway through a mini series that or a ma- of like a year long yeah. weekly series that nobody gave a shit about from the beginning called countdown to halfway through it change the title to countdown on to final crisis so that you have to feel like you buy it to understand what happens in final crisis yeah. and then Grant Morrison just takes a giant shit on continuity in final crisis which regardless of whether you like the book or not right. you have to agree that it has absolutely no- <laughs> fucking nothing to do with <laughs> countdown to final crisis well, whether yeah, you thought really that really book really. was good or not it does not undo the fact that w- why the fuck did I just read 52 issues of a completely unrelated fucking weekly. awful book to get me ready to read a book that has nothing to do with any of that, which Final Crisis has some redeeming qualities or whatever. It's got eh, maybe, but yeah, I, personally, yeah, yeah. I can't read it. I think I think it's yeah. unreadable garbage. But some people out there might like it, so I, I'm trying I to be a part of it. And I just, I was like, it's I don't bad. really think it was Grant Morrison writing it. I, I think it was his like 
um, you know, you have a partial twin. Yeah. He's a doppelganger. No, no, like, no. Like, his I think, parallel universe. I think he partially absorbed his twin in the world. Oh. oh. But it would really? explain the inconsistency in his work. Where sure. you can oh, get, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. Seven Soldiers of Victory and All-Star Superman, which are, like... And we three. <laughs> and like, yeah, and, like, from the same man. Yeah, I like yeah. the Invisibles, and, yeah, yeah. which is brilliant. You should read the uh, Invisibles, too. But uh, yeah, I, maybe maybe he yeah, is, maybe is. Earth Two. Um, Earth is good. Grant Morrison yeah. wrote that. Yeah. No, I'm saying that like Earth Two, Grant Morrison, like a Grant Morrison from. Oh, from Earth Two. Yeah, he okay. wrote that story. Um, he just showed up in a lightning <laughs> ball like a Terminator and. Uh, <laughs> he did. Like naked? A naked, naked? Yeah. Naked except for the bag of mushrooms and yeah. the bottle of like, like absinthe. Naked Terminator. Scotch. He shows up. <laughs> At the DC office. A lot office. scrawnier, also. Yeah. A bunch of drugs. He just shows up naked at DC office, <laughs> home office, and they're like, and they're like Grant, Grant, welcome back. We haven't seen oh, you Oh, Grant. Your clothes and your motorcycle and says, I need your drugs, your drugs, and your other drugs. And just then he it. writes an uh, awesome se- Oh, the other great thing about Final Crisis, little fun fact, he pitched that series in 1996 as a miniseries called Hyper Crisis. Which DC was like, fuck that. We are definitely yeah. <laughs> not printing that. <laughs> Hyper Crisis makes more sense than Final Skip Crisis. Skip ahead a bunch of years. The same <laughs> script shows up. Is it a crisis that did a whole bunch of crack? I don't know. Do you know? Have, this is, again, I don't know how accurate any of my facts are. <laughs> <laughs> so we have no all, credibility. No here. credibility. This podcast, no credibility. Um, these are not facts. Spider-Man's in DC. He's getting rebooted, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. DC Spider-Man. No. So anyway, we've had these series of like the half-assed reboots by DC. Mm-hmm. And now recently um, announcement that at the end of War of the Green Lanterns uh, and Flashpoint. And then a Flashpoint. Right. right, right Flashpoint, yeah. It's a Flashpoint tie-in. Um, there will be a real... DC reboot. It completely. And everything gets a new number one. Yeah, gets a new number one. So, 52. Uh, 52, 52 number ones. Yeah. yeah. 52, and, 52 and different so, number ones. Yeah. Everyone has a new modern costume of age. So they're all going to look like Twilight they with all, coats. Actually, they all have <laughs> collars on. Their, have you seen the new? No. no. They, like they, what? They have like V-neck collars yeah. that like come up above their costume. Like it's, into their neck. Like it wraps in. Like, yeah, it goes neck. up. So and, it like, kind of looks like a vagina. It goes, like, like, yeah, it, no, no, it's just like this V collar that goes around. Like Batman it, goes up into his cowl. Uh-huh. And then, yeah, Superman's got And even Wonder Woman, who has no fucking collar is wearing like a metal v collar i feel like like necklace yeah, yeah. it's weird like i don't know what's like going a floating on. collar i don't know yeah, yeah. necks everywhere yeah but they're not like deep v's like i don't get to see any <laughs> batman chest hair which for that i would be down for yeah, just like the like, tattooed batman symbol oh yeah the bat with symbol the is v-neck. tattooed yeah. on and yeah you only oh, see part of it and that, then the rest oh. of the v-neck is the, like the rest of the v-neck color. yeah, yeah. I'm picturing a whole like Douchey scenes to JLA right now. That'd that would be good. I would, I would, I would read the read, shit out yeah, of that. I would just poster for and then, every And then, you know, scene. who is not on that Justice League is Vibe, but he he had the deep V first. <laughs> like the original <laughs> deep V. He was hipster. the original hipster. We've gone deep. We've gone deep. We, I don't think we can return from that. Anyway. That off of Vibe, best DC character of all time. Um, we so DC reboot. So they have not officially said yet. I don't think that it will be everybody gets a new origin. No, I think they no, have. Yeah. From, from what I've heard, they said that? saying that I haven't, they, right, are, I haven't heard. they are they want to give their characters a contemporary origin, which you can read as saying we are sick of our old fans and we want to gather a legion of you young fans. So the let's, thing is that so let's release the comics in the, in the most unapproachable way. Yes, they're not advertising this at all. They're really, they're they're basically announced it three months before it happens, which, and they've done this along with announcing that they'll have direct day, same day digital releases yeah. yes. as in the stories. Oh God, which don't, is going to have the effect uh, of not only alienating all their own fans that don't want to go out and buy 52 number ones and contemporary reboots of their favorite characters, but alienating their retailers and and, and nobody young is going to give a shit because nobody knows it's happening. No. Yeah. Right. Well, this is the thing that I so don't. Many problems. Yeah, There's I'm just going to. But I mean, like, yeah, I just. Those are already people. I just well like I I just want to start out by saying I understand they want new, they want new 
fans. Yeah, I get that. that. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I I get that. I understand that. They're a business to to keep going. They need to get fresh people in. But yeah. what I don't understand is why they've decided to do this. Where there, you're right. There's there's no marketing. There's no there's no one that's gonna know. And not only that, like I could see if they did this as like almost like an alternate or I mean ultimate universe sort of thing where they created another universe for this because. Not only would they get whatever their new fans that would read that, yeah. um, and they would keep they wouldn't shit on their on their old fans, fans. or their loyal yeah. fans, I guess well, you should say. Yeah. And then and so you'd have the newer people reading the ultimate stuff. You'd have the the fans that were loyal to the stuff that they've been collecting, collecting their old stuff. And then you have the hardcore fans that would be buying both. both right. And so I feel like yeah. they'd really find a way to boost their sales. Yeah, although I agree with you completely. I think that Marvel. I mean, Marvel tried to do that, obviously, like the Ultimate Universe and stuff. Yeah. Right. Well, there. And then, well, they did their it before shot. the Heroes Reborn. Too, you know, and was, it. And it neither neither one of them were really that lucrative. I don't think so. I mean, because both the Ultimate, the obviously Heroes Reborn got axed. But the Ultimate Universe, which was much better, it still got the axe. Like, it still, it still got yeah. cut off. And I think that they're but, done, I mean, are going to be done with that. So I get it. Like, they made a lot of money off of it. But at the same time, I feel like it wasn't the success that they hoped that it would be. And, so, I, and I understand. And I think I, DC doesn't want to make that same mistake. But I feel like the, but I still, <laughs> yeah, I, I still I feel like this way they're shitting on their old oh, fans. Right, and they're, and they, and they are not agree, going agree. about getting any new fans like like Part of the, the thing, yeah at the end of the day it boils down to there are so many ways that they could do this that would be smarter yeah show it just more business savvy yeah. and hold on to that group that just shelled out a shit ton of money for you know starting from three or four what is this like getting on almost five years ago for Infinite Crisis, 52, Countdown, Final Crisis. But it's like, it still, uh, it even feels completely uh, unrelated to... Darkest Night. Blackest, Blackest Night. Brightest Day. Brightest Day. Brightest Day. Brightest Day. And, all, and now Flashpoint. This is some serious fucking money that's we're coming but is it, to. But is it at all related? I feel like it's so tacked on to the continuity that it I, doesn't... I mean, I don't... I just, really, at the end of the day, the only thing I can say about it is it doesn't feel like they thought any of it through. No, it doesn't. It no. feels like after every month, they're like, well, what's next? This. Yeah. What's next? This. And then and then now they're like, oh, reboot. I think like, they're scrambling. I think Marvel did a much better job with their going digital than yeah. they did. They had no fucking well, plans first, for yeah. it. Yeah. And I think they're scrambling to keep up with that and enjoying yeah. that. Really, like, I remember the 90s. I remember when Marvel and DC were both on the brink of bankruptcy bankruptcy because nobody was buying their shit yeah and it's going to happen again because yeah. people don't fucking care a green lantern movie is not enough to get people in buying comic books and especially no. for what they want to charge for the digital comics which is not yeah. a set apparently but a big deal well the, a lot of a lot of digital com- marvel is going 199 i think dc is yeah. going to do about the same which is i really think that the price point that everybody is looking for is 99 cents yeah, I yeah. Feel which like, is i think a fair I mean, yeah. for, for a you mint, trade you know, anything. comic yeah. books, I bring this up a lot, but like comic books are literally the worst return on your investment in the entertainment industry. Pretty much. You pay $4 for, for uh-huh. three minutes worth of reading, yeah. you know, or you pay $8 at a the movie theater for an hour or two hours of entertainment. Like, it is the worst return on your investment. You can read a trade in an hour. It's twenty five dollars. Yeah, yeah. Like the, that. The, exa- the example I use with people um, all the time about this is when I got into The Walking Dead. I got into The Walking Dead um, <clears throat> when they were eight trades in, and what happened is I worked next to a comic book store. The guy said, "Hey, you should read this book." He let me borrow the first one. I went over to my job where I was working. I read the first one, loved it, and I went back and bought every single one that he had. And then went over and read it all in one day, and that was over a hundred dollars for yeah. six hours. Yeah, it's it's it is the worst return on investment, and it's it's hard to convince people to spend that much money when you're like sixty dollars for a video game, or even like thirty dollars for like used yeah. games. Yeah. You know, will get you hours of entertainment. It's hard to convince kids, especially and parents of kids, to shell out this much money for. Such such a little return, yeah. you know. I think that the reason that a lot of parents buy their kids comics is because like, oh, they're reading; it's good for them; it's better than video games. But you know, adolescent kids and kids in high school and college, which is really the demographic that comic book 
companies should be want, or at least I think are aiming for, they're not going to spend their hard earned money or even the money that just the shit money that their parents give them um, on comic books. It's too expensive. The industry yeah, is way too expensive right now. I mean, even trades like look at yeah. how trades have just taken off. They're, yeah, they're going up in prices. I mean, they still haven't gone up as much as single issue prices. Like, right. I have a couple of trades from eighty six, and they're still like fifteen dollars. Like, the yeah. trade price hasn't really gone up that much. But even still, like, there's some twenty five, thirty dollar trades out now. You know, like that's a lot of money to shell out if you're yeah. a kid. And obviously, trades are the preferable format to single issues. Absolutely. I think that we're it's, yeah. better, it's slowly weaning from. Yeah, I mean, look at Superman like, Earth One. Look at, oh, I mean, look at the sales on that book. Yeah, like, it that, was sold out like, at Amazon, which... Well, let me say that again. Yeah, Amazon it sold, sold out. out at Amazon. That, that doesn't happen very often. And so it was it was a big deal. And I think that DC, yeah. like, I feel like that's another thing. Like, they just did an Earth-1 Origins of Superman. And what the fuck happened with Trade 2 of that? Like, wasn't that supposed to be this groundbreaking first ever ongoing graphic novel series from a major publishing company and they already backed out of that i mean well, that's, that's what people are looking for we're looking for trade paperbacks and this is great like we can gimmick away our reboot whatever like it doesn't it's not gonna be the gimmick that is selling comics and, it's not good. Well, and the other thing is and this is just something I heard. I haven't read this anywhere, but what I heard is that they're saying now that, like, there are some flagship characters that they're not, like, changing. Like, they're... That's what I heard, too. Like, Batman. Like, they're, they're gonna... They're, Batman, they're, they're, still, they're still... Yeah, they're like, still keeping some of their flagship... So it's like well, a... I don't know about... It's like a half-ass yeah. reboot. Well, kind of the reason I brought up Crisis on Infinite Earths earlier is because not only... They, I think they did it well like that's kind of a good example of how you should reboot which is funny that they can't take their own company's kind of cues on that but christ on infinite earth uh is 12 issue miniseries 12 or 13 issue miniseries mm -hmm. and it rebooted it took an entire year to reboot but the um the cool thing about it was batman afterwards we got year batman year one that four issue miniseries mm -hmm. but that didn't change the timeline in which batman was set batman was still on his second robin um, he was still the same age that he was before continuity. Uh, Wally West was still at the same continuity. Yeah. He was Kid Flash yeah. before Christ on the Earth. Barry dies. He's Kid, F and then he becomes the Flash right. after. Yeah. So like they didn't completely reboot, start from ground one. Everyone gets an origin no, story right just away. Wrapped but, up all this old continuity. With but nice Superman, Superman did get original continuity, and so Superman and Man of Steel, the all the John Byrne stuff, that did start over at like day one of Superman. Well, it was they, they and so that's to explain where you... the differences between the Golden Age Superman who could not fly and the modern Age Superman who could. Yeah, and so they did his origin, and you got the early stories of Batman and Superman crossing over. Yeah. Still, my favorite comic of all time: Batman <laughs> Superman Annual Number One by John Byrne. But um, the uh, Magpie, Mag yeah, Magpie, uh, so <laughs> good. I fucking love that issue. But. I should I should do a brilliant special edition yeah. of this podcast and read that, but um, with Christian Bale voice. Just, uh, yeah, just read I'm gonna read way. it with a Christian Bale voice. Um, but Even Clint, Clint Eastwood. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, so it was interesting the way that they did it, where they kept some of the characters in in the current continuity, but they also did redid origins of a lot of different characters and kind of tidied tidied up the universe. And then Legends, which happened after Crisis, um, did more of the job also kind of yeah. tidied up the rest like you know, fucking killing off Ju uh, justice league detroit and, <laughs> and getting rid of the Done. other unnecessary dc you know shit um and i feel like they could do that now had they said a year from today we're going to do a reboot here's our 12 issue yeah. mini series yeah, this is exactly. starting to get build some press up you know there's a lot of things they could have yeah. done differently yeah. like i said before i just it feels frustrating because it, it just it just seems like there's no it thought feels half yeah it really rushed. does it feels like a desperate company making a desperate act is really what it does to me and i don't like seriously i have not bought a new uh dc or marvel comic in Several years. I hate because buying they single don't... issues. It's not just that, though. It's like I really believe in... Uh, I believe in supporting things I like and not supporting things I don't like. So I buy a lot yeah. of trades. 
And really, more and more often, what I'm buying are trades that came out 10 years ago, like even five years ago, but mostly 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, because there was something about the industry then that I think was really, there were some really good things happening. Now, it's just, I feel it's like this mad dash to stuff your pockets with money and get out, and yeah. who gives a fuck what kind of story you're telling? And I think this is more of the same, and I don't think it'll last. I don't think no. they'll be able to fucking maintain it. There's no Yeah, I, I mean, I think we should like start a big betting pool when the reboot happens. It's like how long it takes before they like... I think like it, our it was bad. a dream. One month. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah, like, I, was, I was talking about this <laughs> earlier. Next, yeah, 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 I was like, you know, like, my joke was, oh, we'll blame it on the Scarlet Witch, and then they realize, well, we can't. Oh. She's not our character. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. Gonna yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. There you yeah. go. Yeah. There it is. Well, yeah. Well, Said here first. The the like, it's all wrong. It's all wrong. And people will be like, yeah, you know, really, seriously. It's the anti-faith. And, anti and uh, Pariah or what's his yeah. name? will show up. <laughs> yeah. and then, Not again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I, uh, I don't know. I think that it's the most aggravating part of this whole thing for me uh I'm the biggest proponent of digital comics. I think that I'm not going to miss the day that I don't have to buy single issues anymore. Yeah. Uh, people, I think, are fucking insane when they're like, oh, single issues are the best format ever for kind of bullshit. Oh, it's like absolutely. saying that tape, tape cassette tapes were the best format don't to listen to music. Tapes, you know, right? I don't miss <laughs> the days when I had cassette tapes. I don't miss fucking C I don't miss CDs. I don't miss I get them scratched and breaking them and throwing them away. I have, a, I have an iPod and like more music than you could possibly ever listen to fits on that I fits on the iPod and I cannot wait for the day that comics are the same thing. I hate moving boxes of comics. I hate having comics. They just take up space. You read them once, you put them in a fucking bag tape them shut and never touch them ever again and it's the dumbest format on the planet it's so dumb so when jim lee comes out two years after the ipad oh and any digital readers in general you know large size digital readers and is like well, we decided we should release digital comics the same day as paper comics because we think that maybe we'll reach more readers no fucking shit jim lee <laughs> Everybody and their mother said that four years. Where, when are we going to get comics on the iPad? Marvel's there right away. Where's DC? Yeah. Fucking jerking off in a corner, not helping the industry. Yeah. The and people still charging too much. Uh, the people yeah. with the power to change the industry, the people that are going, that could make changes, that could do really interesting things with digital comics, with subscription style comics, they're not going to make those changes because it's risky and they don't want to risk the little bit of money that they can get. You know, who do you think we're going to reach more of? And especially now that you don't have to fucking print the comic. Like, that just yeah, opens right? a whole new world. Yeah. It's like, oh, we can print a limited number of copies, and that costs us extra money. Or we could just fucking not print them and have infinite numbers. Like, you don't sell out of a digital comic. Yeah, exactly. You can't. Yeah. It's a fucking impossible. So you get no, but all the, the money. Thing, right? No, no, it's but you get all the money you deserve. Because, oh, great, it killed the secondary market. Does DC get money from the secondary market? Yeah. No. But they're mad. Their that, the hype but they're shit. mad that the secondary market exists. Like, like the, the, I remember you, the days where, seriously, every other fucking book, they were looking for excuses. They're like, does that end in an odd number? Put a fucking special cover on it. X-Men number one. 20 fucking variant comics. Yeah. It's like, and people would go out and buy all of them, But, right? you know, it's like, it's, like it's better, it's it's better to provide it. real real shit than to hype your shit, I you know? Agree. like no, It's agree. not good to be like, oh, best thing ever, best thing ever, buy it, buy it, buy it. Like, it's better to just deliver a good fucking product all the time and yeah, then not have to do that. Problem, but the right. other half of that is there are 12, 1,200 <laughs> to 1,500 comic book stores in America. That's it. That's all we have left. The number has been fucking declining rapidly since the mid '90s. Uh, who do you think? Is, where are you going to reach a bigger audience? The twelve to fifteen hundred comic book stores that there are, or the infinite fucking number of phones and digital devices and computers and Xboxes that you have in front of kids in kids' hands, like right now? Where are you going to reach more people? Sleeping. Like it's good. not. It is not even a fucking question. Like how? How unconnected with reality is DC well, Comics? Like, how out of touch right? are they? They are very out of touch. Extremely. Apparently. They're just full of bad then, ideas. You know, these are... Oh, and Marvel's are, no. I'm not letting Marvel <laughs> off the hook either. It's still dumb. They're yeah, still dumb. They're, they're but not, they're at not least they're trying. I feel like at least they're trying. No. 
Like, kind of. Yeah. I mean, like, it's still, like, the kind of retard <laughs> try that you're not, like, oh, yay. But, like, they're, they're, I don't know. They're just not as bad as these things. <laughs> I think that gets them off the hook. But, well, and uh, that's, like, the thing, right? To people that listen to this, vote with your dollar. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't like what's going on, don't buy Although, it. it's so frustrating because we are voting with our dollar. Yeah, and they're not And listening. the trade sales have gone up. Like, I was looking at the diamonds numbers. It's like 125% trade sales have gone up with very little increase in the price of a trade where is, yeah. the single issue sales numbers have gone up 25%. But comics have more than doubled in price. Yeah. And for all you mathematicians playing along at home, that's actually a loss of sales. <laughs> that's not good. That's bad. So comic book sales, single issues declining, trade paperbacks going up, and yet every time anyone even remotely mentions that I'm that they're going to wait for the trade, DC and Marvel are there to poo-poo on them and be like, you're what's wrong with this industry. You we ruined know, the industry by trading. Not. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Give me the book the way I want to read it. It's not, oh, it's like, I guess, it's, it's like Nike selling yeah, me Nikes and being like, you wear these on your hands. <laughs> it's like, no, I would like to wear them on my feet, yeah. and I would like gloves just, for my hands yeah. that have fingers so I can still use my thumbs. No, you're wrong. You, the customer, yeah. are wrong. You're spending your money wrong. You're using yeah, the just, product yeah, wrong. Yeah, just, just any, other, any other business where well, there are yeah. people that are like, we have money, yeah. and we want to give you this money. Yeah. And we're like, no, no. 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 <laughs> Don't give us your money. Fuck you. That's not how business works. If I want yeah. it in that format, you have to give it to me that way, or we'll go somewhere <laughs> yeah. else. And that's what's that's, that's why thing. Marvel... You can't put a variant cover on a trade. You can't. You can. It. It's no, deep. no, Marvel does. Marvel does it on the omnibuses and they do it on the they have the direct market covers and the library edition covers that have the numbers on them they, of course they, they, yeah and they print less of one I can't remember which one it is but the they, library they do, ones. yeah they do limited numbers like and the other thing is if you're a collector of comics right now you should be collecting trades because when yes. Batman Cataclysm goes out of print and it's eighty dollars on Amazon, yeah. and Joe has one, then you yeah. sell it, and wow, you're making money as a comic book collector because DC got lazy and decided not to print more issues of or trades of Batman Cataclysm. Yeah. How you hard is that? It's good. Just fucking push print. Like yeah. really, the yeah. book is already done. Just print it again. I know it's a long way from China to the U.S., but like maybe that's a good reason we <laughs> Just should hire make another it barge. Yeah. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Uh, I'm done. I'm tired. But one, one, last, <laughs> one last thing. I've nerd raged out and I'm breathing heavy and I'm tired. But is it ironic that Dan DiDio, before DC, was known for a television show that we all watched as a kid called Reboot? <laughs> is that ironic or just dumb? <laughs> I, it's not ironic. No. It's not ironic. It's complete irony. irony. irony I, I vote for irony. Reversal of expectations. So I should, I did expect this. You did expect, yes. Uh, yeah, I And that's it. for everybody. Irony is not coincidence. That's all I have to say about that. Learning. It's hipster. That's, that's what it is. Learning. We're learning. <laughs> I'm tired. That's what we should call it. You're sweating a little bit. I'm not real sweaty. You, I, I like it. <laughs> comic book club. <laughs> I got angry and sweaty. Let's go eat a Big Mac. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Let's go eat fast food. What are we doing? What are, I forgot what we voted we signed, on for next month. Uh, uh, Desolation, De- Desolation, Desolation Jones. Jones. Desolation Jones. If you've made it this far, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah. Have you edits will occur? Let, no. Sure. We, don't, we, don't, we don't edit this show. There's no edit. Yeah, yeah. Two hours not at all. Just, that's yeah. right. Should we, call, we should call this it's giant a, size. It's just an audition. Giant size. Yeah. New characters. New shit. How long know. is this one? I don't know. Like hours, probably. <laughs> like days. How long hours. have we been here? Um, the, we're an hour and a half in. That's not, that's not that, that's no, bad, actually. We definitely hit an hour and a half before. I, maybe. No. I thought no we had, we're usually like, about an hour. Like, like an hour nine, I think, oh, is yeah. our best so far. Yeah. Well, not that we want to be super long. I think an hour is probably good. Yeah. I think, I, but we had a special I, I edition, special think, edition yeah. DC, DC, DC reboot. reboot. We don't yeah. get to yeah. yell about comics that often. We try to just talk about trades and... Yeah. Be accessible to the general public. I and guess. then randomly yeah. talk about community every now and oh, then. Oh, I love community. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, things to take away from this episode: uh, read community or watch community, <laughs> and read Desolation Jones for next fortnight. Next fortnight. And, uh, and, and hate DC for and its reboot. We just hate 
the convo industry for not giving us what we want. Yes. We love you, convo fans. Go yes. out and yell at somebody who doesn't care about it. It'll make you feel better. If you see someone wearing a DC or Marvel <laughs> shirt, punch them in the face. Pumping. Today, <laughs> it's not illegal. <laughs> Tell the cops that I said that. And you can show them this episode. Make them listen to the whole thing. Make yes. Exhibit A. Exhibit A. Listen to this hour-long podcast. Yeah, that, it'll hold up. Don't even, don't even cue up the parts that are important. No, Make them listen to the whole thing. I the whole promise, thing in the beginning. I promise beginning. that it holds up in court. Yeah. Uh, guarantee. He is a lawyer, by the way. Yeah. I might, I I am might a He's minoring I'm not, I'm not in criminal justice. This. this is all very, very highly illegal. Nope. Totally no. illegal. Yeah. We love you. You're Bye. only here for this night. Goodbye.